week. Pastor Tony. All right, thanks. Welcome to you. Met some new people this morning that are with us, and I'm glad to have you. We're starting a journey today. It's good to see some of the regulars. It's, I don't know, some of the favorite seats are gone, so they're going to be behind. So be gracious to those people that are behind, okay? Can we do that? Wake up. Come on, y'all. Come on. Okay, so in, in your bulletin, there's a little handout today, and it's helpful, and you'll know why in just a little bit. Uh, but there's going to be some scriptures on there. There's going to be some fill-in-the-blanks. Uh, which will help us in our growth. And so we'll, I'll explain more of that in just a minute. We're starting a, our fall campaign. Happy New Year, by the way. I don't know if any of you missed it, but a week ago this weekend, like a week ago Saturday, was the New Year. Uh, it's the Jewish New Year, of course. But frankly, I mean, come on, how many of you are students? How many of you are teachers? Students and teachers? Three of you, good. It's a new year for you. It's a new season. And, and, and frankly, for most of us, even as an old guy, September sorts of marks a new season, and so uh, I look at it with fresh eyes, and we always, as, as a church family, kind of look at doing a campaign. It's different than a sermon series because the focus is, is a little more uh, intense in some ways. Of course, that's all up to the Holy Spirit and you, uh, and, and the other thing is we kind of all join together to grow together in a particular area of our walk with Jesus, and so we're going to start 40 days of prayer. Now, hopefully, you're already doing days of prayer. Hopefully, that's happening. But for some of us, we kind of drop that idea or it becomes a religious ritual or something. And so I want to encourage us over the next six weeks that we would establish some new habits that would help us grow. And so today, where I want to start is today, do you really want to grow up? If you really don't want to grow up, then you're in the wrong place today because I want to give you some words of encouragement and some principles that will help each one of us, no matter where you are right now, to grow in your walk with Jesus, to look more like Christ. That's what he's redeemed us for, not just to whisk us off to heaven, just so you know. We're redeemed so that we reflect the glory of God right here, right now, and that comes through our growth in knowing him. He already knows us, and so... That's part of what we're going to be doing the next little bit, particularly in the area of prayer. The Bible tells us that it's God's will for your life, that you grow, that you mature. And so we just had all those children. Weren't those children cute? Aren't children cute when they behave? Aren't they cute? Uh, you know, children are, are, are really cute. But, but what's really tragic is when children maybe don't continue to to progress. They don't mature. That's tragic when that happens. And yet it's possible to grow old, friends, in this room, and not grow up. It's possible to grow old, but not grow up. Don't poke your husband, please. Don't, don't elbow. Um, it's not cute. It's tragic when we don't grow up, especially grow into more of the character of Christ. That's his desire for us. That's his plan for us. God wants you to be spiritually mature and strengthened, and, and, and he wants you to be a man or a woman of God, and, and he does that by growing us, and we're going to look at some things in regard to that. So in, in every spiritual growth campaign, uh, we look at this idea, but Ephesians 4.14, um, I haven't read it in a while, but the J.B. Phillips paraphrase says it this way, Ephesians 4.14 we're not meant to remain as children at the mercy of every wind of teaching or maybe every feeling that comes down the road. He could have put that in there as well. Not to just fall for anything, but we're to grow up. Instead, we're meant to hold firmly to the truth in love and to grow up in every way into Christ, to look more like Jesus. So we're not meant to remain as children. That's not what we're on the, on the planet for. And... and, and it's not a call to be perfect in everything you do, but to mature, to, to be perfectible, to grow as God leads and guides. But if we don't submit ourselves to him as God, well, we don't even get started well. So we're going to look at some things today in regard to that. How do we respond? Uh, he's given us the mind of Christ, but are we listening to what he has to say? Now, so we're going to look at some things real quick. And we kind of do this every time we do a campaign. So Happy New Year again. I, I want to look at there's, there's, there's laws to spiritual growth just like there's laws in the physical realm around us, right? Uh, so, you know, like gravity, the second law of thermodynamics. 
uh, gravity says, if I go up on the building and I jump off, it's not going to end up good for me. You know what I'm saying? And, and God has put these things in place so that everything is in shalom, in his order, if you will. And so uh, the universe actually works well because God's designed it that way. So there's physical laws that God's created for his universe. And there are also spiritual laws, the kind that give life, principles, that God has created for your life and for my life, for those who will follow Jesus as king. And so if you want to grow, you got to cooperate in that. That's just, just, just the way it works. So let's move on. And I want to look at six things today. Uh, some of them will take a little time. Some will go very quickly through. So if you'll just join me, I'll get my little outline out. Do you have your outline? It's good. It's helpful. I'm going to show you why in just a minute, but it's helpful. First thing is we grow. Every one of us grow in, in Christ-likeness when we feed on God's Word. We feed on God's Word. We grow when we feed. I mean, it's just like your children. If your children don't eat, they don't grow up. You have some children that, that don't grow very fast and they don't eat. And then you have others that eat everything in front of them. And so growth is determined by what we feed on or even the quality of what we feed on for that matter. And so uh, you can't be spiritually healthy. You can't spiritually grow unless you feed on the scriptures, God's word. Listen, if you don't have a Bible, you're here today and you don't have a Bible, and you say, well, I, there's several of them up here. There's some in the back. These are not up here for decoration. They're here for free for those because it's important to have the word of God. And so uh, I want you to feed on it, but if you don't have one, we can make sure you, that you get one. Let me ask you a question. If today, let's say you start a habit of uh, going out every Sunday and you eat a really big brunch on Sunday and you don't eat anything the rest of the week, how's your growth going to be physically? How's your health going to be physically? It's going to be pathetic, and you're going to be hurting, and you're going to be miserable, and all that stuff. And so feeding on the Word of God is not just listening to a message now and then. There's more to it than that. We're going to look at that. Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus says this, people need more than bread for life, because he was thinking they need ham and cheese to go with that, or peanut butter and jelly, or no, that's not what he means by that. People need more than bread for their life. But they must feed on the word of God. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. God wants you to feed on it. And he wants you to feed in a regular way. And so in, in, in Acts chapter 20, verse 32, the Bible says this. Paul says, the word of grace, that's the scriptures. The word of grace is able to build you up and give you all. How much? All. All the blessings that God has for his people. Now remember, if you've been with us the last few weeks, the blessings of God is not always a new car, a new house, a better paycheck. The blessings of God is more of his character and nature in your life. It's more Christ-like by the power of the Holy Spirit, by his grace in you. That is the blessing of God. Matter of fact, Acts 26 says the blessing of God is turning us from our way, from our evil way, because left to our own devices, sin, turning us his way. That is the blessing of God. If you don't know what to do to pray for people for blessing, that's it. Play the breast, pray the blessing of God, which turns us from our way to his way. And so that's all there, the word of grace. The word of grace is able to build you up and give you all the blessings that God has for his people. Do you want all the blessings? It's kind of like having an inheritance and say, no, you know what? I don't even want to know what that is because I'm not going to take any of that inheritance. And the king of the universe has offered us the blessing of his presence, his power, his peace, his very character and nature. So how do you feed on the word of God? Let me just give you kind of six things here. They're, they're um, on, the, on the little sheet and you can remember just by your hand. You can look at these six things. You say, well, I don't have five fingers, but just stick with me. So number one, you can hear the word of God. You feed on the word of God by hearing it. You can read the word of God. So there's another step of, of, of growth in that regard or feeding on the word of God. You can study the word of God, spend more time and begin to look at things in context. You can memorize the Word of God, but and frankly, unless you meditate on the Word of God, it's not going to stick. At least it does it for me. I need to delight myself in the Word of God. So you can hear it. You, you can read it. You can study it. You can memorize it. Oh, and then, and then what is the sixth one? When you use it all in the palm of your hand, 
you can apply it and you begin to grasp more the very character and nature of Christ. And so feeding on the word of God, those are the ways we do that, to think of the hand in that regard. Another way that you can do it is even when you're listening, you can begin to write things down. That's why this paper is important to you, really. Did you realize that you forget 95% of everything they say? I, I don't know who, Eric, do you know who they are? The, they, say, they say that you forget 95% of what you hear within 72 hours. Now, some of you forget in two hours. I don't know. But so it's important to write things down. It's important to write things down. And so when we write it down, guess what? It sticks in our mind just that much better. So feeding on the Word of God, hearing it, maybe writing it down, studying, listening, all those pieces. Here's an action step for you today that we're going to do for the next 40 days that I'm just going to call you to step out and do by faith. Establish a daily time with God for 40 days. Establish a daily time with God for 40 days. Some of you have already done that. Some of you thought, well, that, that, sounds, that sounds difficult. Actually, it'll become a delight as you begin to practice it. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Establish a daily time. The second thing here, if you really want to grow up, is we grow when we learn, when we learn in different ways. When we learn in different ways. Listen, we're all unique. You look around you and see if we're not all made unique. Don't stare at anybody. We're all unique. We, we, look, we have different vo voice print. We, have, we even are, they have those things that can read your eye. Uh, you have your thumb print so you can get into your new iPhone, right? And we all have unique things about us. We also have unique learning styles. And so we learn in different ways. Uh, you're going to fit in a sort of a category, maybe a combination, but, but we have learning styles. In Luke chapter 318, you could, the, the contemporary English version says, speaking of John the Baptist, in many different ways, John preached the good news to the people. If you read some other translations, it says, John went on to exhort in different ways and to warn and to preach the gospel. And so he was there to be a voice for God prophetically. But he did it in ways, whether he was warning, whether he was admonishing or exhorting, and he's telling them, Jesus is Lord. And so we learn in different ways, and, and, and God knows that. And so it's important that we begin to know it, and we maybe capitalize on that for our own growth. Let, let me explain a little more about in detail. Here's what we're going to use, these learning styles, in the next 40 days. And we'll use them in, if, as you choose to use them, actually, but they're going to be available. First of all, there'll be a sermon series every week for the next 40 days every Sunday we'll be doing a message on prayer this week I'm just talking about growth and so some of you are auditory learners you learn by listening some of you put books uh, on we used to put them on tape now they're on digital and then you listen to them going down the road in your car anybody do that or on a device in your home or whatever that is and so you learn well by listening through the ear gate so others say, well, I don't learn well that way. I'm more visual. And so some of you are visual learners. You need to read that or you need to watch a video and so you hear and you see some things going on. And so some of you are visual learners. Others, and you'll know who you are, uh, are oral learners. And what that means is when you engage your mouth, when you begin to discuss stuff, you learn more as you listen and talk with one another. You talk it through. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you, you, you don't even learn anything until you engage your mouth. And then some of us engage our mouth and we don't learn anything anyway. But, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You just own it if it's yours. That's all I'm saying. And, and then, there's, then there's people, there's, there's generalizations. And when you generalize, you generally do the wrong thing. But men come into this next section of, of, of learning. So you got your listening, you're watching, you're, you're, talk, you know, you're talking, you're verbal. And then there's those who just do it. Guys have to just get in there and get their hands on and just do it. How many of you learned how to golf by somebody, you know, reading a book to you? Did you learn how to golf doing that? No, you got out and you swung a club. Somebody might have helped you. Some of you have tried to help me, and I'm beyond help. But you get out and you do it. Softball, you're going to swing the bat. You're going to learn how to throw the ball. Whatever that might look like, you're, you're, you're hands on. So there's that style of learning. So, you know, something's wrong with the car you're going to get out there and I'm not but somebody will th those kind of hands on people so over the next 40 days I want to challenge you to grow 
And, and we're going to talk about specifically the area of prayer, communicating with God and Him communicating with us. And, and we're going to teach through the ear. So when we come together on, on Sundays every week, we're, going to, we're also going to learn through the eye. If you become part of a life group, you'll take part of watching a video teaching. And then there's the next part. There's the oral learning that will go on. When you begin to talk among one another about what is God showing you in this? What, what did you hear in what was said and what you saw there? Those kind of things. So, and, and then there's the hands-on where as we meet together, we might be encouraged or spurred on by the Holy Spirit and others to maybe help in a situation. Maybe to, to be hands-on. Maybe it's laying hands on and praying, but it might be going to do a project for somebody that's in your group or taking in a meal or something. So there's four different ways that we learn. And in this campaign, in this series, what I want us to do, and my challenge to you, so that you really have some growth, is engage all of those four um, learning styles. But you'll have one or two that you lean to more. And so the opportunity. Matter of fact, Job says in Job 33, 14, God speaks in different ways, and, and we don't always recognize his voice. I just want to encourage you, there's lots of opportunities as we go through this 40 days of prayer to learn more of what God has for you to the praise of his glory, not just for your good, not just for your growth. The third law or principle of spiritual growth is we grow when we develop spiritual habits. I was making reference to this just a little bit ago. When we develop spiritual habits, we grow. I cannot overemphasize the importance of building good habits. I want you to think about this. If you build good habits in your life, you're going to have good character. And if you have good character, you're going to have a great destiny. Just think about that. You're going to look more like Jesus if your habits are helping you grow in Christ's likeness. Your habits determine what you are and what you are determines where you go in life. And your character is the sum total of your habits. Whatever they have been, whatever they are, your character is the sum total of your habits. Now, I want you to think about that just a minute. You say, well, I, I have integrity. I'm honest. Good, good. If you're only honest 25% of the time, are you a person of integrity? No? That's like telling your wife, I'll be faithful for 25 days out of the month. So you're going to dig that, right? No. No. This, we, our character is the sum total of our habits. What are we practicing? What are we setting in place? And what are we calling important, committing ourselves to? How do you develop habits? Well, you develop them by repetition, by practice. We admire people who are professionals at things, don't, don't we? Don't we admire that? People who are professional baseball players, professional football players professional bowlers um, but they've spent time repetitively there, there, there's in, in some of those physical activities there's muscle memory and all that goes in place but it's built on habits that we choose to establish and what's important in our life and so my my question is do we really want to grow up and do we want to develop habits that will help us grow in Christ likeness John chapter 13 verse 17 Jesus says this now that you know these things, you could study the Bible. I know people who know all kinds of passages. They, they've got them committed to memory. And Jesus knew them too, and he knows us. And now that you know these things, you will be blessed. There's that word again, blessed. If you practice them, if you do them. That's how we develop habits that grow us in Christ-likeness. You can know things, but if you don't practice them, there's no change. There's no growth. You don't get God's blessing for knowing the right thing. Did you know that? You can have the love of God. You can know God loves you. But if you want to grow in Christ-likeness, you're not going to know the blessing of God just by knowing the right thing. You get God's blessing by doing the right thing, empowered by His grace and by your choices to step out and do that, to set a purpose and and a habit in place. 40 days. We've done 40 days of purpose. We've done 40 days of love, 40 days of, of it being 40 days in the Word, learning how to study the Word of God over the last several years in this New Year campaign in September and October. And so one of the things that we probably as the greater church lack is that 
of faith, confidence, and power in prayer to see the kingdom, the rule and reign of God come in areas that, that so far maybe has not happened. We see things around us. We can complain. We can see things and complain about things in our community, but will we exercise the privilege, the participation of prayer? So that's where we want to grow. We want to grow and we want to be more of the church in that regard. Transformation that comes through habits happen this way. It takes about three weeks when you establish a habit to become comfortable with whatever that is. And it takes about another three weeks to actually get it ingrained in your life. So whether it is your golf swing or whatever, you can kind of get at it for, and finally get comfortable and it might take about three weeks and then it gets ingrained. And so it is with habits, spiritual habits as well. Some of you had have habits in the past and, and they helped you grow in Christ and then you drop them. You, you let them lapse, if you will. And so um, it's time to kind of get back to that place of not just knowing what people say. Well, I'll talk to somebody and they're struggling with something. They'll talk to me a little bit and then they'll say, well, I know what I need to do. But the answer is, will you go ahead and do it? Will you go ahead and step out and do it? Because truth comes in, the, the truth teller is actions. You can know all kinds of stuff. Hebrews 5.14 talks about this growing and about a little bit, could we apply it to feeding on the word of God, but it also could apply to developing habits to help us grow. Hebrews 5.14 says solid food is for mature people. You know, babies, they drink milk or they eat Gerber stuff, you know, all mashed up. Solid food is for mature people whose minds have been trained by what? Practice. Doing it. Repetitiously sometimes. It's called a habit. Whose minds have been trained by practice to know the difference between good and evil. One of the reasons that we have a lot of problems in our lives sometimes is we often make bad decisions and because we don't know which thing to do, what direction to head in. Do I do this or do I do that? Do I engage in whatever this is? Because if we don't know the truth about how God made us and what his desire is, how he made us to function the best, then we've not let that soak in. You know the story of treasury agents. They're trained to know how to look for counterfeit money by looking at the real thing, not looking at the counterfeit. Is that really true? Anybody work in a bank? I've always heard that. Nobody works at a bank. All right. So we'll stay with the urban myth. But the truth is, God wants to train us by looking to him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so that we would get our minds on him, not get sidelined by just making a decision on a whim or on our emotions, but we would say, here's my heart, Lord, speak what is true. And I'm developing these habits that I might spend with you. And so it's an important thing. It helps us to know the difference between good and evil. So let's quickly, I'm taking too long here. Um, a minute ago I made mention that to be an expert at something, you do it, I think it's 10,000 hours of practice or whatever. And, and 1 Corinthians, Paul talks to the Corinthian church in chapter 9, verse 25, says all good athletes, we might as well say pro athletes, train hard and practice to get better. And they do it to win a prize that won't last. It won't last. But we, speaking to those who are following Jesus, but we practice to win a prize that will last forever. What are our spiritual habits that we need to develop? Well, let's just look briefly at that. There are lots of habits we could establish, but let's just keep it simple. First and foremost, the habit of weekly large group worship. I'm just going to ask you to think about Will I commit to gather with the people, the believers? Maybe this is not your home church. Maybe you're here visiting. Maybe you're looking for a place. Will I establish a time to get together with other people to celebrate the goodness of God and be reminded of that and let His Spirit minister to me? Would you establish a weekly gathering with a large group of people for worship? The second one is the habit of small group fellowship. We call them life groups here. We commit to meet with people on a weekly basis in a smaller group to be able to practice not only the auditory but the visual and the, and the hands-on and the 
uh, talking it through kind of learning thing. Because if we really want to grow, these are some of the habits, these four that I'm going to name. So there's two of them. And then another one's a personal one. Develop, developing a, a, a daily time with God, just you and God. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 15 minutes. Listen, if you're not meeting with God regularly now, five minutes will be good. And the fact is, as you allow him to speak, you'll want more time. Amen? Some that know what I'm talking about. And so let's just start where we are. Big group, a smaller group to meet together, and then meet with God one-on-one. -on -one. These are three good habits. And then the last one is in that time with God. They kind of fit in groups. Large group, small group is obviously meeting with other people and God. And then these other two is meeting with God and then memorizing the Word of God. And, and I just want to say again, if I didn't say it in this service, that I find if the harder I try to memorize Scripture, because this is my learning pattern, it, the, it harder it is for it to stick. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But I have found that if I begin to go to God as a person and delight in His Word, there's a place in Psalms that says, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Well, the desires of your heart, He wants to change that so you just desire more of Him. And if I begin to delight myself in the Word of God and meditate on His works, then His Word begins to stick in my, not only my mind, but in my heart as well. Just a little tidbit for that. Big group, smaller group, one-on-one -on -one with God and meditate on his word and let it begin to be part of who you are in your memory as well. And then he can bring it out by the Holy Spirit when he wants to do that. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, always remember what is written in the book. Be sure to obey everything that's written in it. If you do this, you will be prosperous and successful in your life. Delight yourself in the Lord. Prosperous and successful is looking more like Jesus. Yes, and that'll happen at work, and that'll happen. And it's not to get the great promotion. It's not to get something. It's to become more of who God's called us to. Quickly, the fourth step here is we grow when we help each other grow. We grow when we help each other grow. Which takes us back in the big meeting and the smaller meeting. That's the only way we can help each other. There's all those one another's in the Bible. It's like 56 of them. And so... Um, care for one another, pray for one another, love one another. That's always the big one. Everybody throws around love because you can't think of anything even if you're not a believer. You go, well, just, you just ought to love them. What does that look like? Well, when we're in close proximity with one another and we begin to walk this thing out, these one another's help us in our growth. And so this idea of we help each other grow, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 12, I, I want us, Paul says, I want us to help each other with the faith that we have. Faith is in Christ. Help each other in, with that faith. Your faith will help me, and my faith will help you. We're not to condemn each other, beat each other up, but we are called to encourage and hold each other accountable, and that's how we grow, the one another's. That's how we really truly pray for one another. That's how we really love one another, serve one another, all those one another's. It's through relationships. You will not grow in isolation. Anybody know that? How many of you have experienced, and don't, you don't have to raise your hand, but you know what I'm talking about, when you're walking through things and maybe you're at a pretty tenuous place and you isolate. Is that always for your growth? No. No, isolation will kill you. There are times to get away with God, obviously, but if we remove ourselves from the one and others, we are not growing. We're not growing at all. So we grow when we help each other grow. And so you have to make yourself vulnerable. Um, the number one thing that, that God wants us to learn in all of life, the most important thing is he wants us to know how to love. And that doesn't happen in a vacuum. That, and it's not easy. But it's beneficial. And we look more like Jesus. You'll never learn to love in a cave. It just won't happen. We only grow in community. The Bible says this in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. You've maybe heard this before. Let us be concerned, the writer says, let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good to one another. Let us not give up the habit, remember the habits we were talking about a little bit ago? The habit of meeting together. You're not going to grow. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as 
some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. It's that simple. Here's an action step. It's a hard one. You might want to write it down. You ready? Join a life group. Join a life group. You want to grow? Join a life group. We're not doing the publishing thing where you just show up at somebody's house. We're encouraging you. If you want to talk to Cody a little bit about that, talk to me. If you know people in this church, find out if they've got one. And if they're not in one, ask them, why what, what's wrong with you? No, you don't, don't do that. You don't if you want to grow, join a smaller group. It's just part of that habit thing. Number five, this is a short one, okay? But it's important. We grow when we expect to grow. You go, well, duh. I, I'm telling you, some, we do things and we don't think purposely about what we're doing. You grow when you expect to grow. I mean, Jesus said this in Matthew 9, 29. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. Be done to you. Listen, nothing's ever going to happen unless you have an expectancy of faith that God wants to do something. If you don't have that expectancy that God wants you to grow or you don't engage God in that way, you grow when you expect to grow. Nobody grows in their walk with Jesus automatically. It takes these steps, and it's all by his grace. But he lets us choose what we're going to do. You really want to grow up? Number six, we grow when we commit to grow. This is sort of similar to the last one. If I don't have an expectancy, though, I'm not going to commit to anything. If I don't have an expectancy, in, in our, yeah, why not go there? It's the second service. If you're in a dating relationship and everything's going the way you want it to go and you're getting everything you want, why commit, right? If you don't expect anything different, if there's no honoring one another, that's another message. We'll stop there. But you get my point? There's an expectancy and there's a commitment. And, 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 and without that, there's no growth. You're not going to grow. You're not going to stay married for 40 years unless there's a sense of expectancy and what God wants to do and, and, and there's this agreement and there's a commitment, there's a covenant. And, and listen, if you call yourself a Christian today, if you're following Jesus, and I hope you are, then it's because he made a covenant with you. He committed himself. He gave his very life that those who would follow him would be called his people, sons and daughters of the king, the church, the bride of Christ. And without Jesus taking those steps, without him coming and being tempted in every way, just like us and yet without sin, without him following in obedience what the Father called him to do, we would have no reason to worship him. We'd have no, we'd have no basis. We wouldn't even be here this morning. We'd just be out doing whatever we want to do. Jesus made covenant in his own blood. He calls us and adopted us by the blood of Christ. We're adopted into the family of God. And so when a what I, what I want to call you to in this, in this last thing of growth here, this sixth step, this, the only way we're really going to grow is a choice because spiritual growth is not automatic. You can grow older. I'll, start, I'll finish where I started. You can grow older without growing up. Expect and then commit. Make a covenant with God. He's already made covenant with you and maybe with some others. I'm going to choose to meet with you over the next few weeks. I, 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 I'm going to, you know, I've got all these things going on, but I, I'm going to covenant to make this important because I believe God wants me to grow, and I, I, I believe this is one of the, the, the things, if we just pick six, that he wants to help me grow up. Choose to make the effort. Make a choice. Let me ask you a personal question. A year from today, how different do you intend to be a year from today? And if you take no action steps, it'll look just the same as it does right now. Some of you, are, God's been calling you to some new places. And, and, and you know that he's calling you, but maybe you just haven't had some concrete steps to take just to begin to get in that kind of line up with what God's doing. And so these things today, I want you to consider these. I'm not asking you to sign a covenant necessarily but I want you to think Jeremiah 29 we, we looked at this three weeks ago Jeremiah 29 13 says you'll find me when you get serious about finding me that's, that's commitment 
and want it more than anything else. If you're a New American Standard person, God says it this way, and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That's not the organ that pumps blood. That's the seat of your affection. The heart is what you love. That's why we put it on bumper stickers. I heart my dog. What you love. What your heart goes after. Jesus says, when you seek me with all the seat of your affection, I'm going to let you find me. I want you to find me. I want you to be serious about it. It takes commitment. He, made, he was serious. He made covenant with us with his own blood. And he's asking us, as it says in, in, in Romans 12, 1, to offer ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable because of what he's done, which is our reasonable service of worship. And so in this thing of growth, in these steps that we really want to grow up, we grow when we feed on the word of God. We grow when we learn in the uniqueness of our, di our different ways of learning. When we develop spiritual habits, when we commit to some spiritual habits, we grow. When we help each other grow, when we put ourselves maybe in an uncomfortable kind of situation with other people, but we see the blessing of what God's saying to them. And so, when we expect to grow, when we have faith that God really wants us to grow, and then when we covenant, when we commit ourselves Paul said and this would be my prayer for us not just for you or us or even for me but for all of us Paul said our greatest wish and prayer to the church at Corinth is that you will become mature Christians the world is dying to see Jesus and the world's only going to see Jesus through those that are his so growing up into Christ is the call I'm giving us today. And that we would certainly grow in our prayer life. We'd learn more about who God is and who we are as we engage in this next period of time together, these 40 days, to let God establish us maybe in a firmer footing in faith than we've had in a long time. Some of us have seen it and it went away. Some of us have never enjoyed the blessing that God has waiting for you right now. I believe that strongly. So, in all that, and I could save some more, but we'll take the next two pages and give them up and trust that God wants to do things with us. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. Don't forget your action steps. And if it's too easy, it probably, it probably won't help you grow anyway. So, make the effort to do some of these things, all empowered by the grace of God. Are we good? I won't say anything else. Let's do that. Let me pray over us. And I want you just to offer yourself. We sang that song a little bit ago. And I just want you to think about that. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. The seat of my affection. I want you to come sit in that place. It's no longer my throne. But would you just come? Here's my heart, Lord. And to speak what is true. See, all of our growth starts right there. The good news is Jesus came to be a substitute for our sin. Maybe you've not taken that step. And to admit, Lord, I, I've sinned against you. I see your holiness and I see my lack. And Lord, would you forgive me? Lord, I want to put you in that place of king and Lord. Not just a savior, but Lord, because you're king and Lord, you will bring salvation. And so I want to line up with you, God. Grant me the grace and the forgiveness. Maybe that's the first place. It is the first place for all of us, but maybe for you today. I want to pray for you now, for all of us. Lord, I just pray a blessing on every person here as we go into the next 40 days, that we will go into it as a family with anticipation and expectation in what you can do and what you want to do. Father, it would be a waste of time for us to do this and not do it in faith. So thank you in advance. I thank you in advance for your heart for us and what you want to do. Thank you in advance that you're going to do in my life and in the lives of those here who choose to grow. We know that growth is a choice, Lord God. Help us. We pray that as we 
build these habits, as we establish, as we take some steps by faith in our lives, that we will become true men and women of God. Representatives, ambassadors of your rule and reign, your, your kingdom in a world that's filled with unstable stuff, uncommitted people. We could get hateful about it, but Lord, help us to be like you. And Lord, I pray now the blessing of your presence, your peace, and your power to be on each one. Meet us right where we are, but Lord, don't leave us there. Lead us on, I pray. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. I ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now to the praise of his glory. Let's go be the church. Let's connect. Let's take some action steps and not just know some stuff. Blessed are you when you do the stuff that God shows you. Amen? If you need prayer, we're going to be available down here. Good to have you this morning. God bless you as you go. Encourage one another.